Are we to believe that the USS Nimitz 2004 UFO event series video capture and the 2015 Gimbal UFO video captured off the coast of Florida, as well as the Go Fast UFO video from perhaps 2016, are the only UFO gun camera videos existing on the face of the earth? To the Stars Academy member Hal Putoff has recently went on the record at a Las Vegas conference that there will probably be more UFO gun camera videos released by To the Stars Academy. So, is To the Stars Academy going to get its hands on all the UFO gun camera footage that's ever been recorded in the history of humankind? Or, alternatively, is it infinitely more probable that world governments such as China, Russia, the United States, as well as any other nation with a good air force, literally have a combined total of hundreds of hours of video footage in their possession of anomalous aerial vehicles appearing in our skies, aerial vehicles that defy Newtonian physics and classical mechanics. Here is a North Vietnamese MiG-17 being shot down by an F-105 Thunder Chief at the conclusion of a dogfight between the two planes, taken from the F-105's gun camera. This took place over Vietnam on June 3rd, 1967. The original still of the video, consequently, is literally 51 years old. Viewers, Viewers of Post-Disclosure post world. world. What is your best estimate for how many separate videos from all over the world since the year 1967 have captured AAVs, anomalous aerial vehicles? Please tell me in the comments below. The point I'm trying to make is that gun camera video equipment mounted on fighter jets is nothing new and is in fact many decades old technology. So then, why is December 16th, 2017 the first day in the history of humankind that a government has released gun camera footage of a UAP intercept? Well, the first and most obvious reason is because of the truth embargo. Since, since the late 40s, the US government made the determination to outwardly ridicule the subject and claim that UFOs are not worth studying. But internally, the fact of the matter is the US government has had unacknowledged pockets within the various military branches and intelligence agencies for many decades very seriously studying the UFO phenomenon around the clock. Many believe a major reason the U.S. government decided to outwardly ridicule the UFO subject and only study it covertly was because they learned of this phenomenon in the late 40s at the beginning of the Cold War and didn't want to have to tell the world that we're being visited by anomalous vehicles that defy known physics during a time when mutual destruction between the Soviets and the United States was not a low probability. A tip can be likened to an acorn and all the other UFO programs within the US government that have long histories can be likened to a towering oak tree. Let me be very clear. The United States government and many other governments of the world have been covertly studying the UFO phenomenon for decades. This is nothing new. What was revealed in the December 16th, 2017, New York Times article is the tip of a mammoth iceberg that is over 70 years old. Beyond the truth embargo, there is another key reason that the US government and other governments around the world have been staunchly reluctant to share any kind of sensor data of UFOs, whether that's electro-optical, which is television video, forward-looking infrared, or even just radar returns. And that can be summed up by something that uh, Dr. Hal Putoff recently said at the SSEIRVA conference in Las Vegas. He said, there is a twofold nature to the UFO threat. First of all, you've got these advanced aerospace vehicles flying around that we don't know where they come from, who's driving them, what the intent is, possibly off-world even, but the future threat was actually as far as the Department of Defense went and the intelligence community, one of the greater concerns. What happens if potential adversaries achieve significant breakthroughs by getting hold of advanced technology either based on their study of the phenomena 
or from sensor data or from crashed retrieved materials. That could provide a problem for the United States in the sense of threat. There's reason to be concerned about that. Any sensor data, whether EO, which is television video, or even just radar returns, could theoretically be harnessed to better understand UFO technology, which could lead to technological breakthroughs that could give a nation's military an unfathomable advantage over the rest of the world. An analogy to the US, US refusing to release clear UFO gun camera footage is would you expect the United States to release clear footage of the latest aircraft that Lockheed Martin Skunk Works developed? For the very same reasons that the US will not release footage of top secret aircraft, the US government and other governments around the world are reluctant to release video footage of UFOs. The UK's government has recently released a UFO, UFO file that underscores the concern all nations of the world have that their adversaries will somehow figure out how UFOs work and consequently create technology based on UFO technology. FLSScience.com writes in reference to what was found in a recently released UK UFO file. Monitor all reports in case in the future, the hitherto unknown, not understood, underlying phenomena is being exploited by another nation, a senior Air Force commander is revealed to have written. An actual or potential enemy could develop a flying device with the characteristics that these phenomena seem to have. High velocities, sharp maneuver, stationary flight, and few radar returns. The RAF was to be informed of of novel technologies which might be useful to their programs. Propulsion, stealth, and any novel electromagnetic technologies are of particular interest. So yes, the United States, the United Kingdom, and many other nations of the world study the UFO phenomena in hopes to learn how to duplicate its technology so that they can improve their military capabilities 10,000 10, fold. fold. Finally, does the combined total of hundreds of hours of UFO gun camera footage the various governments have in their possession prove that aliens exist and that they are here? Well, let's first look at the characteristics of these UFOs. According to the Tic Tac UFO executive report that George Knapp brought, brought to the public and that Commander David Fravor said was quite accurate, here are the key assessments of the Tic Tac UAP technology. Key assessments. The anomalous aerial vehicle, AAV, was no known aircraft or air vehicle currently in the inventory of the United States or any foreign nation. The AAV exhibited advanced low observable characteristics at multiple radar bands, rendering U.S. radar-based engagement capabilities ineffective. The AAV exhibited advanced aerodynamic performance with no visible control surfaces and no visible means to generate lift. The AAV exhibited advanced propulsion capability by demonstrating the ability to remain stationary with little to no variation in altitude transitioning to horizontal and or vertical velocities far greater than any known aerial vehicle with little to no visible signature. The AAV possibly demonstrated the ability to cloak or become invisible to the human eye or human observation. The AAV possibly demonstrated a highly advanced capability to operate under sea completely undetectable by our most advanced sensors. I don't know if they are extraterrestrial, but I know they are alien. That's for damn sure. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'd like to introduce you to a new shirt that I just added to my t-shirt merch shop. It's called Alien Vehicle Nomenclature. I think it's pretty badass. And if you're interested, a link is in the description. You could also join my Patreon if you wish, or you could just slap a like on this bad boy, and I'll really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next, the next, next episode. episode. episode.